Welcome students, Professor Kevin Taylor here to provide you a walkthrough of the Trello software that we're going to be utilizing as our primary management tool over the next 16 weeks. Students should begin by registering on the Trello website to allow me to add you to the 445.1 animation group. This group contains a selection of boards that I created. The Getting Started board provides your team all of the initial tasks that should be completed to take you from decision making and inception through to initial production. The team boards are allocated to students who are members of each team, and this is where scenes are allocated to individual team members. The milestone task list will be updated by me as we progress through the assignment-based production pipeline. Teams should begin by opening the Getting Started board first. Each board contains a list titled after the team number. Each list has a section of cards, and each card can have a label assigned to it to show the status of that task. This board contains section for each team and should be completed through teamwork relying heavily on discussion and decision making. The majority of the day should be spent in this board addressing these tasks. For this, teams will use the Discord team rooms that have been provided with the option of Zoom conferencing and more than happy to engage in either. I will be dropping in and out of the different rooms to ensure you're all engaging in this process. Throughout this process, you should update your team's Getting Started Trello board. This is done through labels, with a team member clicking on a card to bring up the tab on screen, then selecting Labels and clicking a specific label to add or remove it. Active labels will have a tick to show they are active. Labels are used to give a quick visual update on where your team is at within the process. For example, the process on screen is set as Not Started. If the teams move to this phase, they would click to remove the not started label and add the in progress label. When this phase is completed, the team will remove in progress and add the completed label before moving on to the next card. If I decide I'm not happy with the progress you've made on a specific task, then I would change it from completed to incorporating feedback with teams engaging in further discussion with me before changing it back to completed. Over the course of completing your getting started team board, you and your team will have chosen a script, storyboard, or a film section to produce your animation to. These details are outlined on Blackboard. Moving now to your team's blockout board, teams will divide their chosen story into individual scenes by creating cards in the unassigned task list. From there, tasks are allocated and label statuses set. I've created the board titled Example Board for this class and students are welcome to refer to and utilize this as a visual guide on how to create and distribute tasks within a team. As you create a new card in your team, title it to the scene number, then add a short description of the scene's action. A scene may have multiple components identified by a point before adding an additional number. Students are to work to the concept of developing 20 to 30 seconds of high detail animation by the end of the semester, but this is negotiable dependent on scene complexity. As tasks are allocated, students should have a strong idea of the work to be done. Moving into the blockout assignment, students will begin by gathering reference to support their work. When this is done for a scene, that scene will receive the reference gathered label, so I know where you are at with that part of the process. As you finish the blockout assignment, the team folder will change from Team 1 Blockout to Team 1 First Pass Animation. At this time, team members will be instructed by myself to set all scenes back to not started in order for the next assignment to begin. By day one's end, students will proceed to their team tabs in the Blackboard Weekly Updates folder. You will create one wiki post in your team section and will add answers to the following questions on screen. Please note that there is a specific format to posting as outlined on the wiki tutorial video. Each team will also have an example of this within their tab. For post 1, you will add the title Week 1, with a description of what you've engaged in, such as project planning and research. Below this, you'll add answers to the questions on screen. Now, a week title post covers the entire 7 days from one class to the next. If you do more work later in the week, you simply edit your post and add it to the umbrella of that week's work, which can include a written description or images of the work being done. Remember, we only ever have one post within our team wiki, editing that each time we post within a week or for a new week. I'm going to be checking boards throughout the week and taking screenshots to stay atop of your progress and how this progress correlates to the quality and quantity of work done. 
if you don't update your Trello boards throughout the week, ensure that they are updated prior to the start of each new class. This is also the case for your Blackboard team posts. When a new class starts, students will take to Blackboard to provide comments on each student's work over the past week. This is done by adding a comment that contains a title for the week you're commenting on, as seen on screen. The first week will be week one, followed by your critiques. I'd like everyone's work to receive at least three comments a week. So let's make sure that students are individually commenting on three to five of their peers' work submissions each week. And try to circulate whose work you comment on as well. Blackboard wikis show how many posts a student has made and how many words posted, so it's nice and easy for me to monitor this. Just make sure your comments are relevant and not trash. Clear, concise comments are much better than long, rambling ones. Occasionally, students will be asked to write up specific aspects of their development or even record video presentations as is required by the course. And I'll be sure to keep you all posted on this far in advance. So that's everything we need to get us started. If you have any questions about this process, please post them to the Discord virtual classroom. That way we can all engage in the discussion and learn from the answers. So good luck and happy animating.